I'm Ricky Berman and I'm the director of the Jewish Museum here in London. Uh, the museum reopened in March this year after a major transformation. It's been a £10 million redevelopment. We've been closed for two and a half years and we're now very proud to have uh, reopened with our brand new museum. Uh, the museum aims to be a vibrant and welcoming place for people from all faiths, all ages, all backgrounds. This exhibition, uh, Illumination, is really complementing our permanent displays. It's the first exhibition in our Changing Exhibition Gallery, so it's really inaugurating our Changing Exhibition Gallery, and it's looking at a completely different facet uh, of Jewish heritage and Jewish culture, um, very different from our permanent displays, but it does have something in common because it's really uh, focusing on interfaith connections, cultural cooperation, showing how uh, the Jewish community, even as far back in the Middle Ages, didn't exist in a vacuum, but there were artists who were working in close co cooperation to create these wonderful masterpieces that we have on display. It's a 1450s Northern Italian illustration of the Mishnah Torah, which is a compilation of Jewish law, um, which was um, written by Maimonides, who's a great, famous Jewish sage and scholar of the 13th century. And um, it was illuminated by, well, the attribution, it's not exactly known because it isn't signed, of course, but it's attributed to Cristoforo de Predis, who was a, a very famous illuminator illuminator of the period and worked for the Estes in Ferrara and it's very possible that that's where this comes from because that was a center of illumination and also a center of Jewish um, of Jewish life because the Estes did protect the Jews and the Renaissance the science and the magic and the religion were all intertwined and coming together and being put back together and pulled apart two of them are holding um, devices for measuring distance uh, and two of them are holding armillary spheres. And, and they very kindly have, have led this incredibly rare and early example. Also the, Italian, northern Italy, same period, same, same part of the world, could be... It could be the one the he's one holding. The one he's holding, or it could have been on the same <laughs> But also, desk. I can show you here um, the, the, the illustration that we've reproduced here. Um, and, and actually here you can see very clearly that it is virtually the same object. Well, I think in a nutshell, what you're seeing here is collaboration between artists who respect one another's faith. And there's, you see physical craftsmanship, which is an act of devotion, and which is a mirror of the belief that is actually being illustrated. So there's this beautiful relationship between the ends and the means. Okay, this is a commentary on Leviticus, an old, uh, and it's an, a unique copy of this commentary, which was preserved in a library in Germany. And then when, uh, when that library was brought to the Vatican, it became part of the earliest collection of Hebrew books. And it's never Piet van Boxel at the Bodleian Library, who's a great expert on iconography in Hebrew books, um, has pointed out to me that the king in the Kennecott Bible is an example of this kind of an illustration which made its way into popular culture in the form of the playing card king, probably via the tradition of tarot. Um, but which one can see in this, in this particular example is the inspiration for that image, which is very familiar to most people. I mean, it gives us an opportunity to show enlargements from the manuscripts, um, because actually, if you look at, I think you've already um, been down there with me to look at the Kennecott Bible, this, this Hebrew text, which is here, um, in the original is so fine, it's micro calligraphy, it just looks like a grey line. And these screens, which are backlit at a very low level, because of course we have to have low light levels to, 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 to um, preserve the books themselves, um, gives you an opportunity to actually present without too much discourse, signage, conversation, 
um, self-evidently beautiful close-ups um, which draw you when you come to look at the manuscripts themselves to, to, to try and identify the details. I think this is something that um, the, the people in the museum who, who work with school children and so forth are finding this quite a, quite a useful tool because you can discuss many um, aspects of the exhibition um, just in one place. And here, for example, we have a detail from this beautiful um, plan of the temple. Uh, and one of the outstanding things about this as an object is the freshness uh, of its conservation. Uh, and it's, it's wonderful to see you know, snowy white pages, which must be exactly the same, virtually, as the day that, uh, uh, the, that they were painted. Part of the idea of the way the exhibition is organized is uh, to, to, in a way, create a symbolic um, image of what the exhibition itself is doing. So we've got these windows because, in fact, the, the exhibition is all about connections, connections between countries, between faiths, um, between scribes and scholars, between illuminators and those devising and writing the commentaries. And they are really an example of an amazing collaboration and they literally open a window and that's why the exhibition is called illumination open a window onto the cooperation that's involved in making an object like this it's not just a technical collaboration but it requires real respect and understanding and actually you may say a design couldn't possibly express that but one tries to so for example this the the fabric that we've used for the exhibition is digitally extrapolated from um, an, one of the illuminated books from the Vatican. So we actually made it into a, a, a digital uh, image and then have printed it on canvas. And these, these cases uh, focus you in on specific texts and specific views, but at the same time protect um, physically the objects from glare, from allow them to be properly lit, um, and also allow you to have a personal experience.